If you're watching this video, today is your lucky day. Because in today's video, I'll be sharing with you how to make your first $1,000 online all by sending emails. And you don't need any previous experience. You don't need any testimonials, any previous business acumen or skills or anything like that. Because in today's video, I'll be walking you through exactly step by step how to make your first $1,000 online all by sending emails. So jumping right into it. In 2023, the average salary in the USA, in the US, was $59,000. In Canada, the average salary in 2023 was $63,000, right? And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because obviously I'm in Canada, I live in Toronto, Canada, and I know tons of people, a bunch of my friends that I went to university with, I know a bunch of people all making somewhere between 60 to $70,000 a year because obviously that's the average salary in 2023. Now, why am I showing you this? The reason why I'm showing this to you is so that you could get a better comparison so that you could compare the different ways for you to make money and so that you can make your first thousand dollars online all by sending emails. And as you can see in this picture, my very first client paid me three thousand dollars doing exactly what I'm about to share with you today. Right. So obviously, as you can see in this picture, I made three thousand dollars. I closed my very first client on December 1st, 2022. Obviously, I was using Stripe, which is why this, you know, this screenshot comes from Stripe, my payment processor. And it took them a couple days to process the payments and to deposit the money back into my bank account. Um, it deposited a week later on December 8th, 2022. But since that time, I have collected numerous payments. I've signed many clients, all paying me somewhere between two and three thousand dollars upfront just for me to help them send emails to help them generate sales opportunities, right? So in the screenshot, this is my stripe again. There are a bunch of different payments, all somewhere between 2000, 2400, 2500, even $3,000, right? So what I'm about to share with you today, it just works. And you're able to make thousands of dollars, again, all by sending emails. And again, right? I didn't need to spend thousands of dollars to do this. I didn't need thousands of dollars in upfront capital to invest into physical products or into goods or inventory or any of that stuff. I also didn't need to learn and master 20 plus different skills in order to successfully make money, right? What I was doing was I was genuinely delivering massive value, keyword, massive value to the marketplace. And obviously this is not a get rich quick stream. So if you're watching this video and you think you could become a millionaire after watching this video by doing this business model, you can become a millionaire in the next three months, then this is not for you. Then I just strongly recommend you just click off this video because I can't help you get rich quick. I can't turn you into a millionaire in the next three months, right? I was delivering massive value to the marketplace, right? And that's why I got paid the amounts that I did. So what I was doing, I was using cold emails. So essentially where I email random people, random business owners who don't know who I am, don't know what I look like, don't know anything about me. I'm emailing random business owners. And what I was doing was I was pitching them my services. Now, what was that service? The service was helping business owners generate sales calls by using cold emails. So it's kind of like a loop, if that makes sense. So the exact same way that I got clients for myself for my own business, again, right? I was using cold emails, I was pitching business owners about my service. And what I was doing for them is the exact same thing that I was doing for myself, right? I was helping them generate sales opportunities using cold emails. I was also using cold emails to generate sales opportunities for my own business. And using this business model, I made $10,500 in 22 days. So again, right, I closed my first deal for $3,000 on December 1st, 2022. By December 22nd, 2022, I was at $10,500, right? Here's a screenshot dated December 22nd. Um, as you can see, I made 10.5K, right? And I outlined everything I did, exactly how I did this in my previous YouTube video. Here's a link. It's called how I made $10,502 in 22 days sending emails so you can just copy me. I suggest you go watch this video after this video uh, to learn specifically what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis in order to do this. And again, right? If you're skeptical, I get it, right? But it wasn't just me. So if you're watching this video and you're telling yourself right now, oh, Jimmy did this in 2022. No way that this works in 2024. It's been two years. The market saturates, all of this stuff, yada, yada, yada. Look at the dates from these people, right? Some of these people are literally making money this month in March, 2024. So this process works. This business model still works in 2024 and it works extremely, extremely 
well, right? So obviously I have a bunch of these screenshots over here of different people that are working with me to build their own lead generation agency all making money. You could pause this video. I don't want to spend too much time going into detail, but we see, right? Just to give you some examples, right? Chino made $2,000 from his first clients, right? Doing exactly what I'm talking about today, uh, right? There's a lot of people just making money, right? And you, again, right? You could pause this video and take a look at every single one of these wins. These are all regular everyday people who decided to start their own lead generation agency. And as a result, they were able to make thousands of dollars after signing clients. And the reason I'm showing you this again, right, is this process works. And if you look at some of these dates, right, like Franco over here closed his first client for $1,100. This happened in February 29th, 2024, literally last month, right? We see Tyler right underneath March 11, right? Russell, March 1st, March 12th, right? This process works and it works extremely well in 2024. So if you're watching this video and you're, you might think to yourself, maybe what I'm talking about is an outdated business model that worked two, three years ago and no longer works today. That's not true. And these people are proof. So jumping right into it then, this mod business model is where you send cold emails to generate sales opportunities. And this business model, it isn't some random trendy business model that people are just suddenly talking about. This isn't IPGA, it's not growth operating, it's not building a short form content agency, it's not trendy, right? It's not trendy in the sense where people just randomly discovered it and it started selling a course on it, right? This is not what this is talking about. This business model has been around for literally decades and is a fundamental aspect of sales. And there are people literally being paid six figure salaries or close to six figure salaries at companies literally just to do this, literally just to generate sales opportunities. The specific title, you could go and look this up yourself. The specific title is called a sales development rep or a business development rep. They basically do the same thing. I have, a, I have two screenshots over here from Google. It says a sales development rep, SDR for short. Their job is to find and build a pipeline through sales prospecting, right? A business development rep, their job is to bring in new business opportunities, usually through cold emails, cold calls, networking, and social selling, right? So what I'm talking about today, using cold emails to generate sales opportunities, people are literally being paid salaries to do this at a job. It's not some random business model that, you know, it's a gimmick that just randomly popped up out of nowhere. It's been around for decades, it's proven, and it's a fundamental aspect of sales. But the main difference between working at a job as a SDR, as a sales development rep, as a BDR, a business development rep, versus what I'm sharing with you today is rather than working for one company as a salaried employee, why don't you work with multiple companies, whether that is three companies, five companies, 10 companies, and make considerably more money instead, right? And it makes sense, right? If you're making $3,000 or $5,000, let's say, working at one company as a salaried SDR, if you're able to work with two companies, then obviously you're making 10K, right? And obviously I understand that logic is a little bit broken because I'm sure if you're working at a job, you're probably not able to work two, three jobs at the same time, right? But what I'm talking about is, Rather than working with one company, you're building an agency where you're providing that same service to a bunch of different businesses at the exact same time. And again, this middle business model is called a lead generation agency or LGA for short. And because you're providing a real service to business owners that genuinely have a problem, that generally, genuinely need the service, aka helping them get more customers, it also helps you understand your customers and their pain points significantly better, right? You're becoming a real business owner, right? I also got this picture off of Google. It says 68% of B2B businesses actually struggle with lead generation. That's quite a lot. That's almost seven in 10 businesses that you will ever come across struggle with finding their next customer. So this is a massive problem. And if you're able to help them, help business owners solve this problem, you're able to help them generate new customers, generate new clients in the form of sales calls and sales opportunities, then you will be paid in proportion to the value of solving this problem. And that's exactly how I was able, as you saw, I was able to make two to $3,000. That's exactly how all of those people you saw earlier were able to make thousands of dollars using this business model. So one of the best parts about building a lead generation agency, about selling cold emails as a service, selling lead generation as a service is you're not pretending to know something you don't. 
right? You're not selling Facebook ads. You're not pretending to know Facebook ads and then selling that to a random local business that you don't care about just to make a quick buck and then outsourcing the Facebook ad services to a random VA in the Philippines. I've literally seen gurus teach this on YouTube even, right? Online, people say, just start the service business, sell to them, and then turn around and white label your services, find a white label partner, find some random dude on Upwork or Fiverr, and pay that person 20% of what you charge to deliver the actual service. That's not what you're doing, right? And seriously, there are people trying to sell social media services to businesses, and they don't even know how to use social media to get clients for themselves, for their own social media business, right? How is this not a scam? Because it is. You're selling something to other people that you don't even know how to provide. That's the literal definition of a scam. But by selling cold emails, by building a lead generation agency, you're doing exactly what you sell. You are using cold emails to generate sales opportunities for yourself, for your own business, and you're using that exact same system, you're doing the exact same thing for your clients as well to get them the exact same results. You're also learning a key skill for business in general, right? So down the line, three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, if let's say you want to start a random new business about in anything, you understand a skill, which is how to find your next customer. It's one of the most valuable skills you can ever learn in business, right? There's a reason why companies are paying sales development reps, SDRs, six figure salaries to help them generate new sales opportunities, right? Because it's the most valuable thing in business. If businesses, they can't find your next customer, what that means is they're not gonna be able to make money. And if they're not able to make money, then they're gonna end up closing the shops, they're gonna go under, they're gonna go bankrupt, whatever the case is, right? So what did I not need in order to make $10,000 a month by building a lead generation agency? Well, I didn't need a large team. I had one VA, one virtual assistant that was paying $4 an hour. And the VA's job was just to reply back to people. As sending cold emails, obviously people are gonna reply back. They're gonna ask these different questions. I obviously didn't want to do that myself because it's just super tedious and it's relatively simple. So I hired a VA for $4 an hour. I trained her up and she started working with me and her entire job is to work for one to two hours a day just to reply back to people and answer different questions. That's all I needed. I didn't need a large team. I also didn't need a fancy website to do this. I had no fancy sales deck. I had no fancy sales presentation. I didn't need a over the top super edited VSL or videos, stuff like that. I had no complex CRM. I didn't use any project management tools. I didn't have any automations, no Zapier automations, make.com automations, none of that stuff. I also didn't figure out client onboarding until after I got my first client. Right? So I didn't think steps in advance. I was just focusing on exactly what was in front of me. I didn't need a massive audience to do this. I was not famous and I also wasn't an expert. Well, I was an expert at this very one specific thing, which is called emails, right? And obviously it was proven because by the time I was able to generate sales opportunities for myself, I clearly knew what I was doing, right? Hence, I was able to get results for myself, generate these sales opportunities for my own business. So how do you actually start this? How do you actually start your own lead generation agency and get to $10,000 $10, a month in the next 90 days? Or if that's a bit of an ambitious goal, how do you make your first $1,000 all by sending emails? Well, you come to the right video. So I broke this down into six steps. Step one is obviously to pick a niche, right? So what this means is this is the industry that you are selling to. Because what we're doing is we're helping business owners get more sales opportunities, get more customers, get new clients. And again, right, it's a massive problem for basically every business owner. This applies in basically every single industry that you can, over, that you can think of. So my advice is don't overcomplicate it because getting more clients, getting more customers is a massive problem that again, right, every industry just needs the service. What I would suggest is when you're picking a niche, Block out one to two hours in your calendar, max. That's all you need. Don't go days thinking about a niche. Don't spend weeks. That's exactly what I did. And it kind of just wasted a bunch of time for myself. While you're picking a niche, while you're picking an audience or industry to sell to, there are a couple guidelines to keep in mind. The very first guideline is the industry that you pick. It needs to be B2B. So what this means is you, they need to be selling their service to another business. They cannot be B2C. So it cannot be business to consumer. 
So examples of B2C businesses where this will not work for are realtors, right? They're selling houses or helping regular everyday people buy houses. They're selling to consumers. This doesn't work. Gyms, they're trying to sell their gym memberships to regular average day people. This also doesn't work. Ecom brands are trying to sell a product, a supplement or something like that to regular average day people. This does not work. It needs to be B2B. The second guideline is they need to also be high ticket pricing. And this is more of something to keep in mind, not necessarily a strict guideline. And the reason why you want to make sure that the businesses that you're reaching out to, they charge a high ticket pricing is because if let's say they only charge 500 bucks for their own clients, how can they afford to pay you $2,000? How can they afford to pay you $3,000, right? The math just doesn't math. But on the other hand, if you're working with clients that are charging at least $5,000 per new client, they're charging 10K, 25K, 30K, 50K, then it completely makes sense and the math works for you to charge them two to $3,000 in order to help them generate sales opportunities, right? So that's just a quick, rough mental math formula that you want to keep in mind. The more money they make equals the more money you make. So if they're not charging a lot of money or they're charging a very low price, then obviously it's gonna be hard for you to also charge thousands of dollars. The next guideline is the industry that you pick, it should be broad in the beginning. And as you progress, as you get better at this and you understand this business model in much more detail, then obviously you could become a little bit more specific down the line. So what I mean by broad versus specific is you want to, let's say, pick marketing agencies versus Facebook ads agencies, right? Facebook ads agency is a very specific sub niche under the overall niche, over under the overall industry of marketing agencies. Or another example is working with IT companies versus cybersecurity companies. Cybersecurity companies is a sub niche under IT companies. You want to be broad upfront. And I use ChatGPT to come up with a list of B2B niches, B2B industries where you could easily sell cold emails to, right? There's a list of 15 here. There's software companies, so SaaSes, there's e-commerce platforms, professional services, so law firms, accounting firms, marketing agencies, manufacturing and industrial equipment, healthcare IT, financial services, HR and recruitment, real estate, the list goes on. There's 15 right here and every single one of these work. So my advice to you is just pick a random niche or pick the one that just stands out to you after reading through this list and get right to work on research. Again, do not overthink this. So how do you actually conduct research? So when you are conducting research, there's really a couple questions you want to answer. There's five questions here. The first thing you want to understand as you are picking your niche is understand what service do they provide and who do they help? So let's assume that you're picked marketing agencies as an initial niche. Understand the type of services that marketing services include, right? Because marketing services doesn't really tell you anything. What type of services is that? Is that social media management? Is that running ads? Is that SEO? Is that graphic design? What does that kind of look like? What does that mean when they say marketing services and who do they help? What does that kind of look like? The second question you want to answer is the typical sales cycle because every single one of these industries, they have different types of sales cycles. Now what a sales cycle is, is Sometimes people are able to generate sales calls and essentially one call close people. As a lead generation agency, this is the exact sales cycle you will have. It will most likely be a one call close. You generate sales opportunities, you chat with them for 30, 40 minutes, and at the end, you're gonna collect payments. That's a one call close. But in certain industries such as IT, more complex industries, the sales cycles are a little bit longer or if their deals are really, really large, if they're selling a service for a quarter million dollars, obviously they're not going to close that deal in a 30 to 40 minute conversation. That sales process more likely than not requires multiple calls across multiple weeks with multiple decision makers. So you need to understand the sales cycle and what that kind of looks like for the industry that you choose. The next question you want to answer is how much money do they usually make? And obviously this is very situational, but you want to understand on average, how much do they charge, right? IT companies, what does the average service sell for? Is it kind of low ticket, mid ticket, high ticket? What does that kind of look like as a range? You want to understand that for your own understanding. The next question is to understand common terminologies and common jargons because every single industry is a little bit unique in the way that they talk about different concepts. For example, in marketing agencies, the term lead generation is very common, but for recruitment agencies, you wouldn't want to use the word lead generation. You use the word business development. 
Or another example would be for marketing agencies. You could say, we will help you generate sales calls and marketing agency owners understand exactly what that means. But for SaaS companies, if you're working with software companies, they don't use the word sales calls. They use the word demo calls. So these tiny little jargons and terminology will help you understand that industry. And when you're actually talking to these people, you don't use the wrong terms and make yourself essentially just look like a fool, right? The final thing you want to understand when you're conducting research is how do they generally generate leads? How do they generate current sales opportunities? Are they typically running ads? Are they relying on organic platforms like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube? Are they doing word of mouth? What does that look like? Usually speaking, these different industries, they have different ways of generating customers and it's very easy to understand that. So as you're conducting your research, I want you to understand, I want you to ask yourself and answer these five questions that will allow you to understand your niche, your industry inside and out. So once you have a niche, your next step is to craft a niche specific offer. So what a niche specific offer is, what an offer is, is basically just a short sentence explaining who you help, how you help, and the specific outcome that you will help someone achieve. So if you're selling lead generation as a service, you're selling cold emails, you're approaching these different business owners and there's really just three different outcomes that you're helping them with. The first outcome is helping them generate more sales costs, pretty self-explanatory, more sales opportunities. The second one is helping them get more clients, right? You're helping them get more clients because you're generating them these sales opportunities. The third result is helping them make more money, helping them generate more revenue. These are the three different outcomes that if you're selling lead generation as a service, they are good to include in your offer because they're all desired outcomes, kind of like the end goal. If someone were to work with you, what is the end goal that they will receive by working with you for your service? When you're crafting your offer, you want to be as specific as possible, especially in terms of who you help, the expected outcomes, and your timelines. Use specific numbers. Call out specifically who you work with. So a really good example of an offer is this one. We help marketing agencies, so specific, right? We help marketing agencies sign three to five new clients in the next 90 days, adding $25,000 in additional revenue without relying on word of mouth. And the reason why this is so good as an offer, just to put it out here as an example, is notice how specific this example offer is. It's very specific with who we help. I'm specifically calling out marketing agencies. It's specific with the expected outcome. We are helping you add three to five new clients, adding $25,000 in additional revenue. So if you work with us, we will bring you three to five new clients. That's the expected end result. Very clear, very straightforward. We're also very specific in terms of timelines. We will help you get three to five new clients in the next 90 days, in the next three months, specific timelines. And then we're also very specific in terms of the niche specific sales related pain points. So we know that marketing agencies, a very large amount of marketing agencies, the current way that they're generating clients, generating leads, generating sales opportunities is by relying on word of mouth and referrals, which is why we're specifically calling that out inside our offer. So again, this is why it's super important that you conduct your research because if you don't do your research and you just take a random guess, you're gonna call out something that is not that relevant and you're just, again, right? You're gonna make yourself look like a fool, basically. So in terms of pricing structure, because this kind of ties into the offer, as a lead generation agency, there's obviously a bunch of different ways you could charge your clients that you can make money. The one that I've seen works the best, especially as a beginner, is to do a mix of a one-time setup fee plus pay per each sales opportunity that you bring them. Basically, every single sales call that you generate for your clients, you charge a fee. So as a one-time setup fee, that's what you collect up front. So you're taking these sales calls and at the end, you're collecting payment. You're collecting a payment, which is a one-time setup fee. You're doing it one time, as the name suggests. And what I have always charged it is anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000. As you saw in the picture, my range is two to 3K. And there's a lot of people out there that are charging less, right? So there's people who are doing it for $500. If you're watching this video and you're selling your services for $500, I suggest you raise your prices because what I have found is the number one differentiating factor between someone selling their service as a one-time setup fee for 500 bucks versus $3,000 is all in your head. It's all just confidence because someone who could afford 
$500, they could afford $1,000. If they could afford $1,000, they could probably afford $1,500. And that goes all the way up. That's the t uh, pricing tiering gap that I've personally found after taking hundreds of sales calls. So a lot of that is just confidence and just your confidence in charging a high number on the actual sales call. And what I've always done it for was anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000. Now, in terms of the pay per each sales opportunity, I've always done it for two to three hundred dollars per qualified sales call, and what this does is it allows you to make money upfront in the form of the setup fee, a few thousand dollars, while also profiting in the back end. Because if you're able to, let's say, you're able to generate your clients ten sales opportunities every single month, and you're charging two hundred fifty bucks, ten sales calls times two hundred and fifty dollars equals twenty five hundred dollars. So you're making twenty five hundred dollars for every single client on a month to month basis if you're generating them 10 sales calls, right? And this is after the setup fee. And obviously one of the best parts about the performance model is the better you get at cold emails. So once you send a lot of cold emails, you will get better, right? Because it is a skill at the end of the day. And the better you get, you will get better results for your clients. You will help them generate more sales meetings. And the more sales meetings you're able to generate, it equals more money more money in your bank account, right? And this is exactly why I like this pricing structure so much and it's extremely easy to sell. So the next thing, step three, is crafting your actual cold email. So I talked a lot about how to make money by sending emails, but what does that specifically look like? Well, the type of emails that we're sending, again, they're cold emails. And there's a lot of different YouTube videos online talking about sending cold emails, how to use the best scripts for cold emails, all of these fancy little things. But what I'm gonna tell you right now is what you just need to keep in mind because the specific scripts you use, it will change. The specific words that you will write, it will change. What worked six months ago may not work today. What works today may not work a year from now. But if you understand how to write good cold emails, that's a skill that will stick with you forever. And no matter what happens, you will always be able to generate sales calls and succeed by sending cold emails. But if you're only copying a, a cold email script, some random guy's cold email script, it might work right now, but what happens when the market changes and that specific cold email template just no longer works? You're not going to know how to generate sales opportunities. So the best cold emails that I've ever seen, the best cold emails that I've ever written that has just printed meetings are all super simple and all super direct. The best code emails, it doesn't have any fluff. It's, you want to keep it as short as possible, ideally under 20 seconds, there's different websites you could use to check that. You just write your code email, you copy it, and you paste it into a read to word time checker. And I'll tell you how long it'll take for the average person to read through that message. So try to keep it under 20 seconds to make sure that it's brief and to make sure it's skimmable. So if someone just randomly were out on their date, they're at the gym or something, and they received your code email, and they opened it up on their phone. Would they be able to read through that message within 10 to 20 seconds and understand exactly what you're saying? So you wanna keep it brief and skimmable. Every sentence you write should be adding value. It should move the conversation forward. Something that's super important to keep in mind as well is don't front load all your information right away. So I get a ton of cold emails myself inside my own Gmail inbox and half of those emails are bad and they're bad because people are just saying a bunch of stuff up front. They're selling too hard essentially, right? They're front loading all the information talking about um, when their company was founded, all the key benefits, all the key features and all of that stuff. But understand with a cold email, you don't want to do any of that because people don't care. People only care about how you can help them, what the expected result is and how it works. Those are the only three things that people care about. So make sure you're not front loading all your information. When you're writing code emails, also make sure that you're not including any links. So no websites, don't attach pictures or videos or PDF attachments or anything like that. Don't do it upfront because it will mess with your email deliverability, meaning all the emails that you send will just go straight to the junk folder or the spam box for your email provider or your the people's email providers that you're sending code emails to. And obviously, as with anything else, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? There's a bunch of different things you can try. You can be creative. But in the beginning, as you're learning how to send cold emails, as you're learning how this works, just stick to the fundamentals, stick to the foundations. You know, the saying goes, learn to walk before you can run. And that's exactly why I give you all of these outlines. Because if you write cold emails that fulfills all these guidelines, your cold email is going to be much better than just writing some random stuff off the top of your head. 
So every good cold email, it really always has two key components to it, two key parts. It's your offer, which we just talked about in the previous section, and as your call to action, your CTA, which is your next step. So an example of a good cold email is this. Hi, John. We help marketing agencies sign three to five new clients in the next 90 days, adding 25K in additional revenue without relying on word of mouth or referrals. Mind if I share a quick video running over exactly how this works. So over here, this is the offer that we just put together in the previous section, and this is the call to action. And you see how short and simple this email is? We're not even say, saying anything, right? We're saying exactly who we help, how we help, the timelines, and then we our ask is, can I share a quick video with you showing you exactly how this works? So this is very short, this is very brief. Every sentence adds value to the conversation. And most importantly, we're not front loading all of our information, all of the benefits, all of the features onto the person who's receiving this cold email. So while I was putting this together, I went inside my inbox to look at some of the cold emails that I've received. And this is an example of a bad email. No, no hate, right? Again, I don't know who this person is, but when I was putting this together, I just went inside my junk box. And as you can see, this message went straight to spam. So her deliverability or him, I don't know what it is, but their deliverability was just not that good, right? But as you can see, their email is really long. You wouldn't be able to skim this. If I was at the gym and I just got this, I wouldn't be able to read this in five to 10 seconds. So I would lose interest right away. But more importantly, they're talking about a lot of random stuff and they're front loading all of the information, right? They start by saying, hi, Jimmy, I'm writing from Expand Bridge Ventures with an offer to revolution. So the words they're using are also really big. You also wanna keep it simple. You wanna keep it at an eighth grade reading level because it's just easy to understand, right? So the words they're using right away are just really, really large. We specialize in providing A plus opportunities to professionals just like you aiming to expand your client base in a stress-free way. So they're selling lead generation, they're selling client acquisition. What sets us apart? Three different points. So again, right, they're front-loading all of their benefits. I don't care, right? I really don't care about all of these benefits. If I did care, I would learn about it on a sales call or I'll watch a video or I go on their website to look at it myself. And then their call to action is looking, for, uh, if you're interested in this tailored approach to client expansion, let's set up a call. Please let me know your availability over the over the next weeks and we'll arrange a detailed discussion, right? So I think the biggest issue that they have is the words they're using are just really big. It's a really long cold email. It's not brief. There's a lot of fluff and they're essentially just front loading all of the information. So this is an example of a bad cold email and what you should not do as you are writing your own cold emails. So your next step is step four, which is creating your landing page or creating your website and do not overthink this because a lot of people when they're first starting their business they think they need to go out and build this really nice really fancy website or they need to work with a web developer and spend thousands of dollars developing the fanciest wordpress site or something like that and i'm here to tell you you don't need to do any of these things all you need is a very simple landing page and the only reason why you need this is because as you're sending cold emails people will search up your name people will search up your business and it's just more important that you exist online because if you don't and someone searches up your name, searches up your business name and you just don't exist, you're a ghost, it's gonna look oddly suspicious, right? So that's the main purpose of the website, just so that you exist online. What I personally recommend is to build a landing page using card. Card is super cheap. I think it's like $10 a year or like $15 a year. It's like a dollar a month, something like that. It's very, very cheap and it's very easy to set up your landing page and you could do this in the next hour. It's just drag and drop. And again, right, the main idea is so that you exist online if people search you up and all you need is a simple website, nothing fancy needed with a headline, your VSL, so your video sales letter and a book, a call button, right? So what your VSL is and what the VSL does is just a video running over your service, introducing who you are, who you help, expected results and kind of just like a detailed walkthrough as to your specific services and what someone can expect if they work with you as a client and what the specific step-by-step -step is. So I put this picture together of what a sample landing page can look like. Very, very simple. All you need at the top is a headline. So essentially your offer, you want to call out who it is that you're selling to. So for marketing agencies, how we can help you sign three to five clients in the next 90 days without relying on referrals and word of mouth. Underneath that is your video sales letter. You can put that onto YouTube. Very, very simple. And a call to action button. So a book, a call button. So if someone's interested, 
watching this video, they're interested in what you do, your services, and want to potentially work with you, then there's a call to action button that allows them to schedule a call with you. You can schedule that through Calendly or any other calendar software. So that's your VSL creating, sorry, that's your landing page, creating your landing page. Step four, very, very simple. Step five is to scrape leads. So now that we have identified who you're selling to, we have identified your niche. We have wrote your cold emails and we have put together a landing page. The next step is to find the specific people that we're gonna be sending emails to, right? Obviously these decision makers, these specific contacts, John Smith at you know google.com as an example, not that you should reach out to google.com, right? I don't even know if John Smith exists at Google, but you get the point, right? There's a bunch of different tools online. There's a bunch of different databases that you can use in order to scrape leads and to get the direct email addresses of these decision makers. The best tools that I recommend, at least in the beginning, is Apollo.io and LinkedIn Sales Navigator, right? These are the specific email addresses, allows you to get the specific email addresses of the business owners that we will reach out to. What you want to do is once you are on Apollo or LinkedIn Sales Navigator, this is what this looks like, you want to just test around with different filters so that you can find the direct business owners inside of your niche. You wanna play around with the industries, you wanna play around with the uh, job titles, you wanna play around with the employee headcount, all of that stuff, locations, just test around with different filters. But these are the two tools that you will use to get the direct email addresses of the decision makers, of these business owners that you'll then reach out to to sell your lead generation services to. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The next part is step six, which is setting up the cold email infrastructure. So this business model, it's not as simple as just firing up Gmail accounts and blasting random people with your email messages. It's not that simple and that's good because what that does is it's kind of a filtering process and it will allow you to stand out from all the other people who aren't willing to do this step in order to make sure this actually works. So what you wanna do is the first thing you need to do is you need to buy dedicated email addresses. You need to buy dedicated domains for cold emails. Now the reason why is because every single email address, it has an email sending limit. What I've personally found, I've tested a large amount of numbers, but every single email inbox, each individual email address, you can safely send 30 to 35 cold emails out of each every single day. And if you send more, so if you send 100 out of a single email account, you're gonna land in spam. You're gonna land in your junk folder. So make sure you keep that limit in mind. The other reason why you wanna set up dedicated cold email addresses for cold emails is because what we're doing is sales and marketing activities. And if your domain gets burned and you're using your main domain, the one that you're using for your website, and that gets burned, you're gonna to have to get completely new do domains, completely new websites, stuff like that. And it's just a massive pain uh, in the ass pretty much to, to fix that. So the easiest way to do that is to buy dedicated domains, buy dedicated email addresses strictly for cold emails. So you could buy your domains. I personally buy it from porkman.com. It's an alternative to GoDaddy or Namecheap or Google domains. I just use perkman.com. I found it to be the best mix of cost and ease to set up. Once you have your domains, you want to set up your email inboxes with Microsoft Outlook. The specific plan is Microsoft Outlook 365 Business Basic. You can also do Google Workspace or Squarespace Workspace, but I personally found Outlook to be the, to be the best and that's what I use for myself and all of my clients. After you set up your email inboxes, what you want to do is you want to buy three email inboxes for every one domain. That's the rule. So one domain, three email inboxes, and each of these one email inboxes can safely send 30 to 35 cold emails a day. So what that means is for every one domain, you're basically sending somewhere between 90 and 100 cold emails every single day. And again, right, I've tested this number extensively. And what I've always found was these numbers were the best use of being able to send volume while maintaining strong email deliverability. After you set up your domains and you set up your email accounts, your next step is to use a tool like smartly.ai. This is what this looks like, smartly.ai. And what this tool will let you do is it will allow you to warm up your email accounts for 14 days. The reason why you need to do this is because let's say you're buying these Microsoft Outlook email accounts. You can't just send 30 cold emails the very next day. 
Well, you could, but what will happen is every single one of those 30 emails you send out will 100% land in spam because it's just unnatural behavior. You're not just going to buy an email address and start sending 30 emails the next day. That's not natural behaviors. So what Smartly does is it warms up these email accounts, essentially ramping them up over a series of 14 days so that by the end of that 14 day period, you're able to safely send cold emails that will land in the inbox. It's very important that you do this. And if you skip the step, cold emails is not going to work. You're not going to see any results because none of your emails will deliver in the inbox. After that 14 day period, after the warmups, after the ramping up period, you're going to be sending actual cold emails to the decision makers you just scraped from Apollo or LinkedIn sales navigator. We will be using smartly.ai. So again, the exact same tool that we'll be using to warm up your email accounts. And you'll be using that to automate sending your cold emails because you obviously don't want to, nor do you have the time to manually log into every single Outlook account and manually type out or paste your cold email templates or script into it and send out manually. We don't want to do that, right? It's a poor use of our time. It's not leveraged at all. We want to leverage a tool like Smartly so that it automatically sends out your cold emails for your behalf. And the only thing you need to do is reply back to people, reply back to their questions and things of that nature. So this process, this tool is a life changer, life saver really, because before these tools existed, you would have to literally manually write out these cold emails, paste it, copy and paste in the email addresses of the people you want to reach out to and send these emails. And now that you're able to automate it, it literally saves hours of your days from sending cold emails manually. So that's what you want to do in step six, which is setting up your domains setting up your email accounts and setting up your smart lead account, setting up basically your cold email sending infrastructure. Your next step is obviously sales calls. So now that you're sending cold emails, people are replying back. They're interested in hearing what you have. You're obviously going to get start getting sales calls. These are people, these are business owners that are interested in learning more specifically in terms of how you can help them, what this looks like and how much you charge. The best advice I could give you is don't overthink the sales call because there's a bunch of people online. There's a bunch of sales gurus giving you all of these sales scripts. But at the end of the day, just remember that this is a regular conversation between two people or let's say three people. If there's two business owners and you're the single person, right? It's just a regular conversation. So don't overthink it. Understand that the business owner, the person, they booked a call with you for a reason. They have a very specific problem, most likely a problem specific about generating sales, generating customers, finding the next clients. They have a very specific problem and they think that you could potentially help them solve this. And again, right? No one likes wasting time, right? I wouldn't want to spend 30 minutes or 40 minutes with some random person if I didn't think they could potentially help me. So no one likes wasting time. They scheduled a call with you for a reason. The reality is the very first sales call that you will ever take in your life. It will be the worst that you ever experience. It'll be the worst that you'll ever perform on that sales call, right? And you will get better over time. This is a, this is a skill. It's a skill of sales. And obviously the 100th time you take a sales call, you'll be considerably better than the first time you take a sales call. And the best thing you can do to improve quickly is to do mock sales calls, right? So go out, ask your friends, ask your family, ask your partners to try to do these mock sales calls. And just get familiar with what you want to say, the type of questions you want to ask and how you want to go over your pitch. But the main idea of a sales call is you need to understand their business, understand what they sell, who they sell, what their specific service is. You also, after you understand the business is you want to figure out what they're doing right now to generate sales opportunities. What are they currently doing currently? What does that situation look like? After that, you want to ask different questions, discovery questions in a way to discover the problems that they're facing. So, okay, you're generating sales opportunities using word of mouth and reliance, re word of mouth and referrals. Do you like that process? What are the results right now? Oh, you don't have enough sales opportunities. Why do you think that is? Have you ever considered cold emails? These type of questions where it will allow you to identify a problem that they're currently having and be able to plug your own solution as the gap, as the bridge from where they are right now to where they want to be. After you understand the problem, it's very important that you understand your problem. You should never sell your service until you understand that they have a specific problem that you can solve. After that, and only after that, you're able to explain what you do. 
you pitch your service, you give them a step-by-step -step walkthrough as to what you will do for them if they become a client and what they can expect. And obviously at the end, you wanna close the sale, you want to collect the payment on the call, that invoice, right? So whether that's for $2,000, $2,500, $3,000 as an initial setup, that's what you wanna do at the end of the call. So that's basically the seven steps. I think earlier in the video, I said it was six steps, but the seven steps, these are the seven steps that you want to take if you want to start your own lead generation agency and make your first $1,000 online all by sending emails, right? And because I, you know, obviously this video is already relatively long, uh, it's almost an hour. And because I don't didn't want to make this video two hours long, I obviously wasn't able to go into the specific details. I ran over kind of the high level steps, so seven steps. I ran over at a high level, explaining what it is and the overall idea as to how you want to do it. But again, right, there's a lot more that goes into it than just this one hour video can explain. So what I did was I put together another YouTube video. It's on my YouTube channel. It should be the first YouTube video you see if you click into my channel. But I put together a one hour long video. It's a step by step. So it goes into extreme detail, running over each of these seven steps in specific detail and what you can do to get started right away. I literally share my screen and show you exactly how to script leads off of Apollo, right? How to create your VSL how to craft your offer, how to write your cold email scripts, I share with you in detail inside that video on my YouTube channel. And I suggest you give this a watch if building a lead generation agency is something that you're interested in. If you want to make your first $1,000 by sending emails, then watch this video. It's extremely valuable. And it goes over these seven steps in extreme detail, right? And people literally charge thousands of dollars for the stuff that I share in that video, but I'm giving to you completely for free. Now, on the other hand, let's say you watch that video or you just know that you want to start your own lead generation agency, but you want more one on one help. If you want more one on one help starting and getting your lead generation agency to $10,000 a month in the next 90 days, then what I did was I included a link to my calendar in the link below in the description below. And what my offer to you, what I'll help you do if we work together is I will literally help you pick a niche. I will help you craft your offer. I will write your cold email scripts based on the data that I've had. I have sent over a million cold emails and booked hundreds of sales calls. I know what works. I will write your cold email scripts for you. I will create your VSL for you. I will practice with you for the sales calls, mock sales calls. Again, right? I've taken hundreds of sales calls. I've heard every single objection and I will be able to guide you through that process, right? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm guiding you through the process of building your own lead generation agency, of building your business and figuring out any answers to any problems or any questions that you will ever encounter along the way. I've been through the process. There was a time when I was at $0 and then there was a time when I was at $10,000, 22 days later. And there was a time when I was at $20,000 and then now I'm at $50,000. I walked through that entire process and I've encountered 99% of all the questions and all the problems that you are probably going to encounter along the way. But again, right, this offer is for people who are serious about building a lead generation agency. You need to be 100% committed to the process and willing to do whatever it takes to succeed because this isn't a miracle, right? Just because you work with me doesn't mean you'll be at $10,000 in the next 90 days if you do absolutely nothing. So you need to be committed and you, you need to be willing to do anything, doing whatever it takes, doing exactly what I tell you to do step by step. And again, this is not a course. This is a one-on-one -on -one paid consulting program. And the reason why it's not a course is because everything I share, all the information that you need in order to build your own lead generation agency, I literally share it for free on my YouTube channel. And the reason why I do this is because number one, I understand that not every single, not everyone can pay for this type of information, right? When I was first getting started, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And the only way to learn was by paying some random dude on the internet, a guru, thousands of dollars for his course that taught me outdated information. I also think selling information is pretty stupid, right? Because you can literally find anything you need to know, a Google search away, a YouTube video away. So selling information, in my opinion, is pretty stupid. But the reason why I have this one-on-one -on -one consulting program is to expedite the process to expedite the process of making money, of succeeding by building a lead generation agency because the information is all out there on my YouTube channel, right? I don't gatekeep any information. The information is there. 
But once you actually take action, keyword, take action, and you actually embark on your process of building a lead generation agency, you're going to get stuck somewhere, guaranteed. You're going to run into these random questions or random problems. And if you're doing it yourself, you're just going to have to figure it out on your own the same way I did. You're just going to have to Google it, do all these different things, try different things. But the problem with that is that's going to take a lot of your time, right? The process of doing it yourself, it might take you months before you get any sales calls, right? It might take you six plus months before you sign your first client. And the reason why it will take you so long is because you will run into these problems, into these challenges. And again, right, you just got to figure them out on your own. And you might also be uncertain as to what the next step is, what you need to do next in order to make money and sign your first clients. And this will take you months before you get any results, right? And this uncertainty, it's going to cause you to spend unnecessary time doing random things, right? It might take you weeks. It might take you months before you make money by building a lead generation agency. And there's a saying, right? You either pay with time or you pay with money. So if you want to build a lead generation agency where you can make $10,000 a month in the next 90 days, then set up a call and let's chat. On that call, we'll put together a specific roadmap to help you get to $10,000 a month in the next 90 days, right? And while I was building this out, this flow chart, I thought I would just, you know, try to act wise. You know, I'm 23 years old, but I'll try to act wise. There's a quote, you don't know what you don't know. And that's the entire premise of building a business. You just don't know what you're doing, right? You don't know if what you're doing is right, if what you're doing is wrong, if what you're doing is even the right step. And that's extremely costly on your time. So that's pretty much this video. Hope you found it valuable. I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Bye-bye.